following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's it's. It's hard to believe this could happen in America. Once more, tonight, NBC is going to sock it to you. Schusten Greibel Blinzen. Greibel. That's the most beautiful thing I ever heard. And now, direct from the Egyptian delicatessen here in beautiful downtown Burbank, NBC presents Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Starring Dan Rowan and Dick Martin with guest stars Barbara Feldon with Judy Karn, Artie Johnson, and special guest star Sonny and Eileen Brennan. Ruth Buzzy, Goldie Hawn, Larry Hovis, Henry Gibson, Pat Morita, Roddy Maud Roxby, Paul Winchell, yours truly Gary Owens, and Morgul as the friendly drow. If Tuesday Weld married Frederick March II, she'd be Tuesday March II. <laughs> and now, continuing with our silent movie, here are the thrilling voices of Dan Rowan and the dreaded Dick Martin. <laughs> Say, I miss seeing you around today. Oh, I was sticking pretty close to the phone. Oh, expecting an important phone call, huh? Well, I guess a call from Kirk Douglas could be considered important. Kirk Douglas called you? Oh, well, you might say he called me. No kidding. What'd he say? Well, you might say he didn't call me, too. Uh, I should have known better. Why would Kirk Douglas be calling you? Well, just to tell me what time he's going to be here, that's all. Now, you're not going to get Kirk Douglas on the show talking like that. Worked with John Wayne, didn't it? <laughs> In the first place, what, what makes you think? What makes you think that Kirk Douglas would ever consent to come on this show? A little voice told me so. What do you mean a little voice told you so? Fortune teller. A gypsy? Well, not an ordinary gypsy. What ordinary gypsy? What? Uh, gypsy Rose Lee, that's it. The stripper. She doesn't do that anymore. Well, that's how she got famous, was taking her clothes off in a theater. Well, she gave it up. How do you know? Because well, last night I took her to the theater and she didn't make a move. <laughs> I'll tell you who is here tonight. Sally Field. Flying nun? No, oh. not, not tonight. She was on last week. Oh, I'm glad she's not here tonight. Why do you say that? Well, I was getting kind of fond of her, and I'm kind of against mixed marriages. <laughs> you and a flying nun, that would be a mixed marriage, all right. Well, sure. She's on ABC, and I'm on NBC. Oh, that to you is a mixed marriage. Well, I don't want you to get me wrong. It's just nothing I have. My best friends are from ABC. It doesn't matter. I just wouldn't want to marry one, you know? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Yeah, you haven't lived with them, boy. What do you mean I haven't lived with them, boy? When I was a kid, someone from any ABC moved on our block. So? Well, the first thing you know... The block was full. No, the block was canceled. Yeah. Hey! Barbara Feldon's here tonight. Oh, I love Barbara Feldon. And Sonny's here tonight. Oh, I love Sonny. And uh, he didn't bring Cher. Yeah, his sister mentioned that. Uh, no, it was her sister that mentioned Cher it. has a sister. Oh, I guess so. They're twins. Identical? Cher and Cher alike. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped that one through, didn't I? You're putting me on. I think it's time we all went to a party. I only switched to bananas because I couldn't keep my cantaloupe lit. I'm really worried about the world situation. We've been teetering on the brink of peace for years. Back home in Texas, we like to think old Lyndon's gonna win by a landslide. We also like to think cigarettes are good for you. <laughs> You know that when Sigmund Freud discovered the sex drive, General Motors tried to buy it? And if the fisherman tickleth the rainbow trout, what then of the handmaiden? I don't know much about politics, but I'd vote yes on any proposition. <laughs> never coveted my neighbor's wife. But then again, neither is my neighbor. Lady 
Bird says she'll beautify America, even if she has to move heaven and earth. -a. If there'd been a union in those days, there'd be no Bible today. The Guild would never have allowed Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to work on Sundays. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. The price of living is going up so high, I can hardly afford to buy my groceries. Maybe I ought to rent them. Yes, in international affairs, our president and your queen are inseparably linked. Really? How long has this been going on? Man, I'm an Aquarius. You know, the sign of the water carrier. My horoscope says I'd never let myself go. Now that can be a problem. <laughs> an idea. Let's get out of Vietnam and not tell Martha Ray. <laughs> Why, well, there ain't a Republican around can beat a Texas boy like Lyndon. Unfortunately, there are a few Democrats. Oh, I could never be a racist. I'm allergic to horses. As the Maharishi says, when crossing one's legs to meditate, it is best to be seated. My Harry worships the ground I walk on. He has this thing about topsoil. <laughs> Say when. How about right after the party? <laughs> I don't know what all the fuss is about. The wives of Henry VIII went topless. The Lord loveth the cheerful giver, but he'll also take from a grouch. I'm glad they didn't have the pill in my mother's day. Where would I be? Why don't you Americans recognize the red Chinese? Because to us, all Chinese look alike. <laughs> Very interesting. I know four hippies who died from drinking milk. Really? Yeah, cow fell on them. The British are coming. Good. I'll take two. <laughs> it's sock it to me time. Socketh it unto me, socketh it unto me, socketh it unto me, socketh it unto me. <laughs> I wish they'd sock it to me. <laughs> Step right up and test your strength. Right here, right this way. How are you there, sir? Yeah. You like to try to test your strength? Yeah. Go ahead, find out if you're a sissy or a he-man. Yeah. Give it a go. Yeah. There you go. on the night we were wed. To do it. Well, I, when, when I was... Huh? We are the strongest country in Europe today. <laughs> we are the strongest country in Asia today. Wonder how the winners are doing. <laughs> out there in television land. Moving right along now, we spotlight stars of tomorrow today. Yes, it's Laugh-In's new talent time. That's what it is. Oh, that band makes your hair hurt. <laughs> Come on. Well, yeah, why don't you... You're always, you're always kidding the band about the way they play. That's Who's not kidding? <laughs> Come on. Folks, as you know, tonight our special guest star is Sonny Bono. He didn't bring Cher? Nope. Tonight, Sonny's appearing for the first time without Cher. 
Laugh-In has arranged for Sonny to work with a new partner. And here they are now, Sonny and Seal. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Sonny, but you are nothing without me. Well, Sonny and Seal, you ought to hear their records. Oh, <laughs> I gotta great, say boy. one thing, they are different. Oh, and here's Two. something else that's different, too. You got another goodie? Oh, have I ever. From our 50th state, let's meet and greet the Mokalua family with their Polynesian Review. Aloha. Hello. That is Hawaiian for aloha. <laughs> I wonder if you'd uh, tell us about this great act. Certainly. My family will perform, and I will explain the meaning of the many gestures of the beautiful and dangerous hula, as performed by the lovely Luluani. Luluani. <laughs> <laughs> the volcano sings and I listen. I love the song of lava. In the lagoon below are the streetcar, for that matter, the pineapple calls to the shark. <laughs> Pineapple eats the shark. The shark eats the pineapple. Which one is it? The shark and the pineapple eat the volcano. Oh, Cleveland is very pretty. The shark and the pineapple eat Cleveland. Now they're filled with regret. Aloha, shark. Aloha, pineapple. And aloha, Cleveland. You know, there are 20 million stories in Hawaii. And this has been one of them. <laughs> Lots of winners. Looking for them high and low. Oh, yeah, I got one. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> I forgot. I don't know. <laughs> well, here's one you'll never forget. The ventriloquial artistry of Lucky Pierre. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Say hello. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Yes, of course. <laughs> I am Lucky Pierre, and this is Pinkas. We have been ventriloquist and dummy. Oh, come on now. <laughs> he is the dummy. <laughs> really? Stop that. <laughs> now, uh, we are going to do some ventriloquism for you. <laughs> hey, why don't you comb your hair? Uh, I don't have a comb. Why don't you use your father's comb? He don't have no hair. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I want you to watch me very closely. Watch this, I say. Tita, 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 tita. Now you try that, please. Tita, tita, tita. No, 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 no. You're moving the lips. You must do it without the lips. Watch closely. Tita, 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 tita. Now you try that. Tita, tita. No, no. You keep moving the lips. Watch me now. I'll be all like this. Tita, watch this closely. Tita, tita, tita. Now make it up now. 
teach her tight the tick tick uh, no, 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 not got the right idea. You have to there. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, we're going to do a song. Now we will do a song for you. And here's the way we go. Sweet Adeline. My Adeline. Very good. My Adeline. My Adeline. <laughs> I think that just about finishes our new talent for tonight. That's about the best bunch we've had yet. I think you're right. Any one of these young people may be the stars of tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe even later tonight. <laughs> well, all you folks at home, hope you enjoyed our new talent. And if you have any new talent of your own, just write us a letter. And we'll send them to your house. Maybe later tonight. <laughs> Here's the latest news from Tanganyiki. Uh, let me spell that for you. It's N-E-W-S. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're certainly honored to have with us tonight the world champion Hungarian goat caller. Would you give us a demonstration of your Hungarian goat calling prowess? <clears throat> hey, you Hungarian goats, I'm calling you. <laughs> Ugh, dick, dick. Um, Harry, Harry. That's so so. Take a chance. How about you, sir? How about testing your strength? Huh? Find out whether you're a sissy or a he man. Huh? All you do is you take that hammer and place it on there just as hard as you can and give it a go. The British are coming. The British are coming. I don't care. <laughs> well, as long as you're up, could I interest you in some revere work? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> give me sake, give me sake, give me sake, give me sake. <laughs> Not me, huh, you round eye idiot? <laughs> I faced a firing squad in my maiden form bra. There are good Germans and there are bad Germans. Not for us. To us, war German rook a -rack. When Dick and Dan look at the news, past, present, and future. What's the news across the nation? We have got the information. In a way, we hope will amuse you. We just love to give you our views. La la da da, ladies and And now here's the man to whom the news wouldn't be the news without the news. Here's Dickie. Aha, I beat you. May the good fairy find a warm cockle in the cockles of your heart. <laughs> and now here's the news of the day. In keeping with the trend of actors in politics, President Johnson today announced the appointment of Elizabeth Taylor as Commissioner of Wildlife. <laughs> I must say I agree with him. In keeping with the New York police chief's new ruling against brutality by uniformed policemen, he transferred six of his men to the Plain Clothes Division. <laughs> I ought to take care of 
or something. <laughs> Salvador Dali, world-famous surrealist painter, witnessed a bank holdup this morning and volunteered to sketch his impressions of the thief. Three hours later, the police arrested two pocket watches, a ladder, and a crutch. <laughs> future 20 years from now, let's see, that would be 1968, 1970, 1971, 1970. Uh, that's 1988, Goldie. That's 1988, Goldie. Now, here's Dan. Washington, 1988. Concerned over the fact that computers are replacing humans grew so intense in Washington that the President of the United States had to be unplugged so that it could cool off. <laughs> Item 1988, an effort to correct the image of history was made when the remaining American Indians were asked if they had any grievances. Both said no. <laughs> Item 1988, with the lowering of the legal age to drink, drive, marry, vote, carry a gun, and be drafted, 14-year-old war hero Freckles McGuire was shot in front of a polling booth by his 12-year-old ex-wife, a chronic alcoholic, who escaped in a new convertible equipped with training wheels. And now, moving right along, as we always do sometimes, here's a laugh and news extra. With St. Patrick's Day coming up, here's Dan Rowan in County Killarney with a genuine Irish leprechaun. So take it away, Danny boy. Hello, anybody home? Hello? Are you there? Hello. Are you a leprechaun? <laughs> well, I'm not the flying nun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. I, I didn't know there were any girl leprechauns. No, isn't that silly? Without girl leprechauns, how could there be boy leprechauns? <laughs> <laughs> Never really thought of it that way, but I see your point. Hey, what are you doing up here? I thought all you leprechauns lived underground, around the roots of trees. No, not Irish leprechauns. Oh. You must be thinking of Polish leprechauns. Polish? <laughs> Aren't all leprechauns Irish? No, there's leprechauns everywhere. Oh? There's leprechauns in Japan and in Sweden and in Israel. Israel? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, there aren't any leprechauns in Israel. You've never heard of a leprechaun? <laughs> That's a local joke. <laughs> you know you're very cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll bet you're part Irish. Well, yes. How did you know that? Your right eye is smiling. <laughs> hey, listen, according to legend, if I catch a leprechaun, he has to lead me to the end of the rainbow and get a pot of gold as a reward. What happens if I catch a... A lady leprechaun like you. Uh, well, let's put it this way. It's better than any old pot of gold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right back to you, Dick. Now cut that out, you two. Hmm. Item. They held a beauty contest in beautiful downtown Burbank today. <laughs> One more joke like that, and we're going to send you to Glendale. <laughs> to Burbank. We'll be right back, so don't touch that dial. I told you not to touch that dial. <laughs> Dear Aggie, I have 14 children, and I'm worried that my husband doesn't love me. Signed, Expecting. Dear Expecting, don't worry. Think what it would be like if he did love you. <laughs> I sure wish you could tell that on the air. <laughs> Step right up and test your strength. Step right up. Uh, uh, how do you do, madam? Oh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Would you like to test your strength? Just give it a good whack right here, sir. Test your strength. Get it up there. Up to He-Man. It was our fault. <laughs> the British are coming! The British are coming! Uh, what did you say? <laughs> Never mind. For marriage. And to get a cross-section of opinion, we've asked a group of typical Americans to give us their frank, soul-searching answers to this burning question. Again, should there be love before marriage? Yes. 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 Yes! <laughs> what was the question? 
<laughs> Should there be love before marriage? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sure. I refuse to answer on the grounds it may tend to incriminate me. Love is the only game never postponed on account of darkness. If I did meet the girl of my dreams, what would I do with my wife? Are you the kind of girl who parks with men on dark country roads? Not unless driven to it. <laughs> if you really want to save money, marry your second wife first. <laughs> Well, whoever left the St. Bernard in the parking lot, please go out and get him. He's burying my Volkswagen. I have 300 wives and no children. What is wrong with those girls? What has a lampshade on top and turns on? My cousin at a party. What's my your arm? Oh, it hurts when I do this. Well, don't do it. Anybody can do it. Come over and test your strength. Ah, little lady, would you like to get... Here you are, little lady. Just hit it right there and test your strength. Tonight, our Mod Mod World takes a look at the hereafter. We're five undertakers who welcome you to happy acres. We haven't met you, but someday we might get you. Our chosen profession leaves little room for self-expression. Methods don't vary. It's always cash and berry. We seldom get to meet first. You always enter feet first. But when your card game's played out, we help to get you laid out. We have a suspicion. Nobody loves a poor mortician. It would be nice if you try. Cause we're gonna get you by and by. Did he I die? Nothing much occurring when days are spent in touring. But nights get pretty scary around the mortuary. A tisket, a tasket. We found a blue and yellow casket. Drop in and give it a try. No need to malign us. You'd better watch that sign. Just said the subject of mod mod world is the hereafter. The hereafter what? The hereafter, the great beyond, where everybody is going one day. Well, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, all right. As long as we have that settled, now we take a look at the hereafter. Not me. Well, come on, you may as well face it, Dick. Someday, eventually, everybody goes somewhere. Argentina. <laughs> You're really serious. You don't want to talk about it. Well, you can try, but I'll avoid it. Okay, let's start with funerals. You start with funerals. Now, I can't really believe that you never in your life have been faced with this problem. Well, just my uncle. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't... Oh, well, it happened quite a few years ago. Oh, you were in charge of the arrangements. You probably took him to an undertaker. No, he took him to a taxidermist. <laughs> a taxidermist? Well, it worked out kind of well. Uh, you see, uh, just, uh, I thought, it's he and my aunt, they seem happy. They, they seem happy. They're in the same house, together? Well, they're not always together. Well, most well, not. Most of the time, she's in the kitchen, and uh, he's out in the parlor reading. Newspaper. 
He's out in the parlor reading the newspaper. Yeah, once a week I go over and turn the pages for Uncle. <laughs> well, I can see you just don't want to talk about it. Is that about what you're trying to tell me? You don't want to talk about it? You catch on slow. <laughs> well, we all have to go sometime. That's what they'd like you to believe. <laughs> you better believe it, because right now we're going to go to a funeral. How's that? Laugh-In is having a funeral tonight. The ratings were that bad? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, the ratings have been holding up very well. Then what are we having a funeral for? Just so we can see what it looks like from the other side. The other side of what? Come on and you'll see. Ooh. <laughs> He's not dead. He's just asleep. I got a hundred bucks says he's dead. <laughs> Doesn't he look wonderful? Well, why shouldn't he just go back from Florida? <laughs> oh, he looks so natural, just like he did in real life. In life, he wore lipstick and rouge. <laughs> I just think he was going to play golf with us tomorrow. It's awful. Awful? Uh, it's tragic. Hey, no, wait a minute. Maybe Henderson will play with us. Yeah, we can call Jim. Yeah. <laughs> you saved my life in the Army once, Charlie. Someday I'm going to make it up to you. <laughs> oh, Charlie. I'm alone, all alone. I have no one to look after me. You know, Charlie, it's just like you not to be here at a time like this. Before you do that, shouldn't I say a prayer? I'm afraid he was an atheist, Parson. Oh, oh, what a shame. All dressed up and no place to go. And to my nephew, Theodore, whom I said I would mention in my will, hi there, Theodore. Hey, what's your brother? He's sick. Oh, he's not sick. He just thinks he's sick. How's your other brother? He thinks he's dead. I want to talk to my wife, Margaret. She was a telephone operator. Mm -hmm. oh, hear me, oh spirit world. I am calling for Margaret. Margaret, the telephone operator. Your call, please. This is Hugo. Is that you, Margaret? I am sorry. I cannot give you that information. But I must have that information. I will give you information. <laughs> information? I want to talk to Margaret, my wife. She's about 5 feet 4, 26, 24, 36. I'm sorry. That number's been changed. Please deposit $20 for three minutes. $20? You can go to the devil. I'll connect you. <laughs> Hello, this is hell. Hell? I want to talk to Margaret. Margaret? Hugo, is that you? What do you know? He took it with him. Die, 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 die
And now, folks, it's socket to me time. Suck it to me, 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 suck just line up in front and just hit that for all you're worth. Give it a go. Are you a hawk or a dove? Both. Are you a hawk or a dove? Chicken. Stick them up. <laughs> From Ohio, a gentleman writes, Dear Aggie, I am not particularly attractive. I am short and dumpy with bad skin and a high-pitched voice. Is there any chance for me? Yes. I suggest that you read and take hope from my new book, Life Among the Short, Dumpy, Bad-Skinned, High-Pitched Voice People of Ohio. Hey, Dick, when are you gonna give me the $50 you owe me? I told you, as soon as I get it, I'm broke. Yeah, ma'am, I can't well, wait I forever. Hey, stick them up. Here's the 50 I owe you. <laughs> this is your offstage announcer reminding you that tonight's program will be shown to our fighting forces in the NBC legal department. <laughs> the British are coming! The British are coming! What do you say? Dummy! You got the wrong word. <laughs> Step right up. You don't have to be strong to test your strength. That's all in the wrists. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, would you like to test your strength? Just hit it right here. Hit it right there, sir. Right here. Atta boy. <laughs> I said the British are coming. Oh, I thought you said the Yiddish were coming. Would you let the little lady do it? Step right up there. Now, my little lady, we'll see how hard you can make it. Go ahead. You have a Good to go. Now, that's really all. I thought that was funny, but what does a kid know? True or false, Jackie Gleason is not fat. He weighs only 95 pounds, but is hollow. <laughs> and so tonight, our Laugh-In public opinion poll looks at a very important question. Should we revise our election system? Well, if you ask me... I didn't ask you. I want to hear what the man in the street says. Well, what's the question? Should we revise our election system? Well, I think the president should be drafted like the soldiers are. If you can send a young boy thousands of miles away to settle the problems of the world, why can't you send the same young boy to Washington and let him try it from there? I say, let's get the elections out of the hands of the people and back in the smoke-filled rooms where they belong! Let's make Valentine's Day election day, hmm? Send a valentine to the candidate that you love the best, and the man who receives the most valentines is automatically the president. This way, we would be electing the most popular man, and all the others would know that we still love them, too. <laughs> 
question. <laughs> You're doing it all wrong. You make so many rules about your presidents. You never have had a good queen or a king. <laughs> You Americans with your stupid elections, what do the people know? Do it the way we do in the Soviet Union. The one candidate, then you have no problems. Unless he loses, then you got trouble. Well, I could save the government a lot of trouble. Just send the candidates to me one by one, and I'll tell you which one is the best man. Well, does that answer your question? What was the question? The preceding was an unpaid political announcement. In the past few weeks, Laugh-In has made comment on smoking, censorship, violence, crime, and saluted the establishment, because we believe that if you look hard enough, you can find some good in everybody and everything. And so tonight, in keeping with this policy, the cast of Laugh-In salutes ex-governor George Wallace. <laughs> And that about wraps it up for our salute. My life up to now has been flashy, I guess. A poor girl got lucky and made a success. I came from the east to this wonderland town. I'm famous and rich, but it's getting me down. Ah! Live in a mansion, my pool is immense. I just bought a Rolls and a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I'm building a bank and a brand new motel. Then why must our lives be like empty old shells? Well, we. neighbor who barely can speak goes to a love-in like three times a week my hairdresser told me while waving his comb this love-in he threw was like six nights in Rome my girlfriend just told me I'm sure it's for spite she went to a love-in and stayed half the night but pick out a place where the action is slow and that is the time we're invited to go. So we've never been to a loving where they pass around flowers making nice, nice for hours. Just a jolly Hollywood loving. No, we've never attended at all. All too. and get some help. <laughs> Step right up and test your strength. You don't have to be smart. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to test your strength? Well, here, just take this hammer and hit it right down. Oh, you're going to use your own. All right, all fair. The British are coming. The British are coming. We've got to stop meeting like this. Harold is getting suspicious. 
Well, it's time to say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Sayonara, Dick. And uh, next, whoa, I wanted to thank you for your letters. You've been writing a lot of letters. And next week, I hey, think I you'll see... I wonder if you'd mind if I said something my great-grandmother once said to me. Gee, I wish we had time. Next week, and... She answer... was in the kitchen putting up quince jelly at the time, and she got her foot caught in a bucket of molasses. Oh. <laughs> the ice man yeah. came in, and they slid under the wood stove. Oh, gee, that's <laughs> funny. I'm glad we squeezed it in there. They were and... there for three days. Say good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, everybody. Old Mother Hubbard stood by her cupboard and tried to find something there. Along came a cop and she had to stop because Old Mother Hubbard was bare. My cousin just joined the Boy Scouts. That girl's going to amount to something. <laughs> He's so dumb. He thinks an inkling is a baby fountain pen. <laughs> My boyfriend is so square, he thinks that the freeway is Sweden's answer to matrimony. What's the loadout on Turkey and Greece? Oh, they're too fattening. <laughs> Say, does the train stop in San Francisco? Boy, it better. There's gonna be a big splash. <laughs> Yak, be nimble, yak, be quicker. You've got a new job as a chicken flaker. What should I do? I've swallowed my pen. I use your pencil. Oh. <laughs> I've heard plenty about your lovemaking. Oh, it's nothing. That's what I heard. Don't you think every woman ought to have a mink? Certainly not. How many minks have women? This lawn is a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Since I've been going to my psychiatrist, all my confusion is gone. I go eight days a week. Have you ever seen the solar eclipse? No! Where's it playing? <laughs> Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her. Pickled her in muscatel, and there she's keeping very well. Look, <laughs> look. Who's there? Freeze. Freeze who? Freeze the jolly good fellow. Freeze. Hey, I just shot 14 ducks. Were they wild? Well, they weren't tickled to death. Oh. <laughs> so remember, he who laughs last is the last laugher. No, he who laughs last laughs last. No, no. The last laugher is a laughing laugh. No, the last laugh. Laugh yourself. The laugh, laugh, clown laugh, laughs the last. That hurts when I do that. Don't do it. No. <laughs> Find out who's going to be next. Excuse me. Oh, sir, would you like to test your strength? Oh, come along, sir. It won't take long to test your strength. Just hit it right there. The British are coming. The British are coming. Will you sober up and get in here? The war's been over for two years. <laughs> Would you believe Sony and Cher? Seating was recorded earlier because we were ashamed to do it now. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs>